I greet you and welcome you as we gather together for this Christmas special service. In 1818, the choir director and organist came to the pastor and said, the organ is broken, we have no music for Christmas. The pastor wrote a poem and brought it to the choir master and said, can you set this to music? The choir master did, and two voices and a guitar came and they sang, Silent Night, a transforming moment in a dark moment. Well, I'm so thankful that here in this place we are going to have some wonderful additions to our Christmas service we might not have been able to plan. And right away, it's the bells. And also, we have a lot of children that will be actively a part of the service. We've been taping them through the day, and we'll incorporate them into the worship service. And then after the worship service, I invite you to come to the sanctuary between 5 and 7 for a special candle lighting, one at a time, Come in through the parking lot entrance, light your candle, place it in the cross, and then exit there. Christmas Eve, 5 to 7. Let's turn in our entrance hymn now and sing, O come, all ye faithful, O come, all ye faithful. first reading is taken from the second chapter of Luke, beginning with the first verse. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was expecting a child. 
While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. We join in singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. continue reading from Luke 2 beginning with the eighth verse. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, in heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Join in singing, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
like to share the prayer. And some of our Christmas songs have some of the most beautiful prayers, including this one, the last verse of O Little Town of Bethlehem. O Holy Child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell, O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. A reading from John. A reading from the first chapter of John, verses 1 through 4 and verse 14. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of the people. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen the glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of our Lord. I have some special friends that are going to join the bell choir. We're going to come up and sing together. Oh, little town, away in a manger, away in a manger. Come and join me around the manger. Here we go. Okay, sing together. and sharing Away in a Manger. Thank you. And the last verse of Away in a Manger is a prayer. I have a special friend here who's going to join me in the prayer. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay. snow 
in the bleak midwinter long long ago it was long ago on a northern farm there was a young man out there doing his chores and he wasn't a very happy young man you see he was at the age when he was supposed to make the transition from childhood to adulthood. And in those days, many years ago, that transition took place in a very special, important kind of way. Back in that day, the way that a young man would become a young man and a full man would be to get the gift of a hunting rifle so that he could go out and he could get the game that would be essential for life and for the farm. Well, it was Christmas. And this young man, he happened to be named Philip, was not happy. Because he knew this year again, he was not going to get his rifle. And he was upset. Reluctantly, he was doing his chores and he was making sure he was getting it all straight and getting it right because he knew that if he blew it and missed something, he would have to come back out in the freezing cold and the wind and have to redo it. So he was in a hurry, but he was making sure because he was not going to be putting up with being sent back out there. Finally, he got done and disgusting, he went inside and he kicked off his boots and he threw his coat over in a corner and over he stormed to the fireplace, stoked up the fire, put his feet up right against the fireplace to warm his cold feet and sat there in a big hump, just disgusted. Christmas, no good for him. He was glad for the fire. After all, he's the one that cut all the wood. And he drug it all the way from the woods, way down at the other end of the farm, drug it all the way up and piled it up so it was ready for the winter. Building a fire was something he had pride in, but not this night. It was just disgusting. He wanted to be warm, but left alone. He sat there just thinking, oh no. What's going to happen is my dad's going to come in and he's going to sit down here by the fireplace and he's going to take out the Bible and read that old story about Christmas. He wasn't ready for that. He didn't want any of that. Just leave me alone. He'd like to have had his own room to go hide, but that little tiny, that tiny farmhouse wasn't big enough to hide in. Sure enough, his father came in. His father came in and his beard was covered with ice. It was so cold and so windy and so miserable out there. His face was red. And as he came in, he called out, I'm going to need you, son. Go put on your warmest clothes. And with that, he walked back out. Well, this was not at all going to go over well. But Philip knew that he couldn't just sit there, so he got up and he reluctantly put on all of his gear again, took one look at his mom, who kind of gave him a knowing smile, but that was it. He was out, and there in the midst of this blizzard and blowing and cold, came his father driving up in the wagon with the horses all hooked up. And it wasn't the small wagon, it was the big wagon. He thought, what is going on? My father has lost it. What is his Christmas night? Father got down and said, son, go load up the wagon with firewood and fill up the whole wagon. The whole wagon. This was the big wagon. What do you mean? That's my firewood. What are you thinking about? But he knew better than to argue. So he got up and he drove the horses over and he began.
began loading it up. His father went inside and came out with some large bags and put them on the wagon. And God on it, in silence, they began to drive across the field and on their way to another farm. Philip was so disgusted he didn't want to ask his dad, where in the world are you going? Have you lost it? And away they went up over the fields. Finally, he just blurted out, where are we going? He says, well, we're going to the Olson's place. The Olson's place, that's three or four farms down. What? He didn't say anything. He just said, said nothing and just rode along. And his father said, I went by the Olson's place. Remember the little boy there? Yeah, I remember. As I went by, I saw him out trying to forge for some firewood. We're going to go help them out. He drove up, and he was just as disgusted as could be. His father got off the wagon, and there he grabbed those two big bags. And inside one of the bags was a bunch of food. And inside the other one was shoes. And he took those big bags and he carried them inside and said, son, bring in the firewood. We need to stoke the fire and warm this place. And so reluctantly he did just do that. Got in and he started to soak up the fire. And these kids that were huddled underneath the blanket and shivering began to warm up. And they came over and they stood next to Philip and they were they were really happy to see him. The father took out the shoes and he put them on and they fit. It's like, what? How did he know that? And then he pulled out the, the meal and said, here, this is for you. And oh, by the way, we always have way too much on Christmas to eat in our house. I'll come by tomorrow and I'll pick you up and bring you for Christmas dinner with us. And the widow began to cry in thanks. You see, the father of the house, Mr. Olson, had died in a farming accident. And with that, the kids began to surround Philip's father, and they wouldn't let him go. They just grabbed on his legs, and they didn't want him to go anywhere. But he said, I'll be back tomorrow. We'll come. Come on, Philip. They got back in the wagon and they began to drive home. And his father said, Philip, I know all year long that your mother and I so wanted to get you that rifle. We've been wanting to do that all year. I took some extra work even in order to try to gain some money so I could buy the rifle. I had the money set aside and I was on my way to buy that rifle in town when I saw that little boy out there trying to scavenge for some wood and I remember his father dying and how we're trying to help them out so I'm sorry but instead of getting the rifle we got the gift for the old souls. Philip sat there just paralyzed for a moment. And then something began to dawn. Instead of the wind and the cold, suddenly he looked up and there were stars. And it was a beautiful night sky. And he began to think of how beautiful this moment was, really. And the story that he would hear his father read suddenly made some sense of how God saw us in our great need and how he gave up everything to send his son to care for us. Christmas was born in Philip that night and is born in us today. What can I give him, empty as I am? 
If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would know my part. Yet what can I give him? Give to him my heart. On this Christmas Eve, I will end each segment with joy to the world, and you respond with, the Lord is come. God of good news, we thank you for your good tidings as your Holy Spirit made its way from ancient Israel to the ends of the earth. Bless all who preach and teach, who hear your word, that the work of your Spirit, then all, me all people might see the salvation of our God. And we pray especially today for the work of the call committee and the council as they make decisions about Breck Lutheran and its future. Joy to the world, the Lord, the Lord is come. come. Divine ruler, you are truly, we are truly grateful at the appointed time. The fullness of your majesty and mystery was perfectly revealed in your son. On this holy evening, we celebrate you becoming flesh and dwelling among us. Shine your light into all the darkness of this world, especially where there is oppression, persecution, war, and destruction. May the light you give us reflect outward into the dark places of this world. Joy to the world, the, the Lord, Lord is, is come. come. Jesus, our healer, remember on this holy, joyous evening, all people who are suffering from loneliness, depression, abuse, poverty, hunger, illnesses, and injustices of all kinds, be they mental, physical, or spiritual. We especially think about those who have had or are currently struggling with COVID-19, especially Jerry Hasbargan, who is hospitalized in Fargo. Also for Lori Allen as she prepares for surgery, and for Kenzie Christensen in her battle with answer. Grant comfort and healing to them all and those we name in our hearts, that they may receive fullness of your grace and truth. Joy to the world, the, the Lord, Lord is come. come. Grant peace on earth and goodwill toward all human beings. For the sake of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, lead us in the ways of peace now and always. Jesus, our Prince of Peace, in whose name, in whose holy name we pray. Joy to the world, the, the Lord, Lord is come. come. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of our Lord and Savior. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy Lord. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue with our offering of special music our wonderful bells.
continue with our candle lighting and silent night and again invite you to come between 5 and 7 to light a candle in the sanctuary and place it at the cross. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were brought into being, and what was brought into being was life, and the life was the light of all people. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never overcome it. This Word became flesh and dwells among us, full of grace and truth. We sing together, Silent Night. In our celebration now of joy to the world, the Lord is come. We'll do it with the bells and sing it, and also we'll have lots of children and people who have been around today at the live Christmas uh, pre presentation, and they will be joining us. Please stick around for that big presentation along with us. Joy to the world, the Lord is come.
the world, the Lord is come. Amen. Thanks be to God. Past in those days that there went out a decree of Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyanerus was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Joseph also went up to Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judah, un unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage lineage of David to be taxed with his with Mary his espoused wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. These things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had that they had heard and seen, as it was told un unto them. Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. 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 Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. The Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. 
Jesus has come for you. Perfect. Joy to the world, the Lord has Joy to the world, the Lord has come! Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Jordan the world has come. Jordan the world! Jordan the world! Jordan the world! Alright, that was. Oh. Do we have to sing it? No, just say it. Well, you can sing it if you want. Please arrive, Ragged Ray! Jordan the world! Jordan the world! Alright, that was.